I was pretty certain that I would look at Draupadi most closely to understand how she came to be this extremely mm. angry woman. Uh, and because anger, feminine anger is something we need to tap into uh, to understand all this simmering rage really that lies behind you know, patriarchal societies like India. <laughs> You also wove in the stories of other very strong women from the epic in that book. Tell us about, um, first of all, I mean, when, when did you sort of think about doing this? Because I know you wrote this uh, novel about 10 years ago. Um, were That's you right. already aware of Chitra's work in this uh, field or were you not? Or was this a completely independent uh, kind of uh, piece of uh, serendipity that you also sort of chose Draupadi as a, as a central character in your novel? Yes, so um, Sunit, thank you for that question. And you know, who could uh, live in Delhi and not know of Chitra's book? Uh, of course, I knew of Palace of Illusions. But um, this, as you said, this work came about 10 years ago. And it came from a very personal space, as you know, actually, most of my books tend to end up being from a very personal reaction to the world. And as you were saying, these myths are very much part of our lives, whether we want it or not, we absorb it through culture, to television, through dance performances, through our elderly, you know, parents, grandparents who might tell us these stories. So we absorb these stories bit by bit. And there was uh, an aspect that I sort of was rebelling against at that point, which is the story of Sita in a way, you know. Uh, it, I was looking for an antidote to the Sitaification of our culture, that as young women growing up, we were often given Sita in some way or the other. We were force fed her in drips and drabs without even realizing, being told we should be certain ways in Indian society yeah. not to Just love. Just for those who may not know it, Sita is the sort of pro protagonist, the female protagonist the of the Ramayan, That's which right. is the other epic, the other great yes. Indian epic. Of course. Yes. Sorry, I didn't. And she's that. supposed to be the perfect woman with the all the perfect woman. qualities. Yes, exactly. Know? So she's helped that to us as a perfectly virtuous Indian woman, a perfect wife who commits no mistakes. And yet at the end of her life, she is nonetheless repudiated by her husband. So this used to trouble me because I have two daughters and I was wondering, how do I tell them this story that you have to be this perfect person, you know, this perfect woman in Indian society. And she, you even have something called the Rakshman Lekha, which is the way society brings in strictures for women. You cannot cross that line, imaginary line, but actually very real in society. You cannot dress a certain way, you cannot talk too loud or laugh too loud. So these were things that were troubling me. And I found in Draupadi almost an antidote to that because in a way, if you think uh, you know, uh, of the way in which um, things like pollution and purity are viewed in women in India, there's a very strong association with the idea of blood and women. So if on one end of the scale, you have the pre-pubertal girl who is extremely holy and unpolluted. So you even have Kanya Puja in certain parts of India because she is so pure. At the other end, you have an a menstruating widow who is the most unholy person you can imagine. And yet within this scale, uh, we have Draupadi who claims the imagery of blood so fiercely that she says, for 13 years, I will not groom my hair until I have drenched it in the blood of my enemy. And this idea of blood with women is extremely potent. It is a very fierce symbol, a very fiery symbol, you know, and a very dangerous one. And I thought a woman who can claim this symbol for herself so openly and flout it in front of her husband for 13 years must have some really interesting story to tell us. So I was sure that when I was going to look at the Mahabharat as an antidote, as I was saying to the Ramayana and, and Sita as she's portrayed in the Ramayana, though I'm sure she's more nuanced than the way we are you know, often uh, told about. Uh, so I was pretty certain that I would look at Draupadi most closely to understand how she came to be this extremely mm -hmm. angry woman. Uh, and because anger, feminine anger is something we need to tap into uh, to understand all this simmering rage, really, that lies behind, you know, patriarchal societies like India. If you've enjoyed the conversation that you just heard, do subscribe to our channel for much more.